I was very effective at teaching. Uh, which I have been. Yes, I mean, if there are no questions, then you understand, right? Yes. Meaning that I've been effective at what I do. All right, thanks. So we continue off from where we... So what? No, I'm going to talk about that actually just now. So we continue off from... Yes. When are we? Yes. Why not? Why should, we, why should we not have the quiz? We are having the quiz on lecture series number 16. On, on, on Friday and lecture 16? Yes. What, you, you thought things had stopped or something? No. No. Um, yes. <laughs> Lecture 16 and 17 are take home the lecture 18. Right. Um, yeah, so, so the thing is, because of the confusion, I think, most on my part, I mean, I was unable to upload these things when I was away. So we, we won't really have the take home quizzes. Um, we'll make up a plan some, at some point anyway. But we have quiz number 10, which is based on lecture series 16, computer architecture abstraction, on Friday. Right? Uh, so, Hopefully this answers people's questions or concerns. Okay, so so yeah, is this fine? Right, right. And then we are meeting on Sunday. We we need to finish off with. Excuse us. Could we please quiet down, please? Uh, on Sunday we finalize the what makeup makeup session three and four four right. So it's fourteen hours. Oh, I didn't include the time. 14 hours, uh, same, same venue, you know, School of Education Conference Hall. And then, there's a reason I'm asking if there are any questions. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if, uh, I'll try one of those stoppers, I guess. Yes, are things okay? Are, are we, do we, do we now all, have we been able to put the different pieces together? Do we, do we have a firm sense of where we are coming from and where we are going? Are things making sense now? Because things are supposed to make sense. You know, we are, we, are, we are having a discussion on a broad range of topics, but they are connected in a way, right? And at this stage, everyone should be in a position to put the different pieces together, right? The puzzle. Oh, this is why we're doing that, right? Just don't mindlessly do things. Well, you can, I suppose, but we're almost halfway done here, right? So. Uh, and I thought, I mean, I guess everybody knows now. Um, uh, apparently, our exam is scheduled for Wednesday. Uh, like to, uh, Wednesday, like today, right? Uh, but it's at 14. Now, the reason I put this up is because, like, last, last year we had, a, we had an issue with the uh, language minors, right? Um, there was a clash between the people that, uh, not all the language minors, but the people doing English specifically. I think this is English, is it? Um, it so it happened that uh, the the uh, this is a clash, is it? Yes. Yeah. So you want you want to sort this out? I'm not sure how many language minors are in here, but there's a process you have to go through. You know, you go to the AI, I think the assistant registrar, and then you have your representatives. This is where we have representatives. The class rep, you know, go and complain or lodge a complaint on your behalf. This needs to be ironed out. The 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 the, the issue with it not being done um, quickly is. Um, you'd be left with no choice. Like last year, what happened, what ended up happening is the, I think, I said, was it, I, I don't know if this was moved somewhere. Uh, it was, was moved in the morning, but the problem was that the, the people that, yes, they were quarantined. I'm trying to see what, how the quarantine worked here. Yeah, I think it was, I, I don't know. So, so you, you write, you, if you're doing LAN, right, this was the exact time table, if you're doing LAN last year, you wrote ICT 1110 in the morning before the, the other guys, right, and then you remained in the venue, right, you couldn't go anywhere. Yeah, you were quarantined because you tell your BFFs to say, no, this question came and whatnot, so you're not allowed to use phones and whatnot, um, that's what it means to be quarantined, right? Um, 
you want to avoid this, not, not because of being, yeah, I, I guess because of being quarantined, because what this means is that you spend what? Almost like a continuous a stretch of almost six plus hours, right? Sitting in the vein, right? So this needs to be ironed out, right? Class reps must uh, sort this out. Okay, so we continue from where we, where we left off. We, we did a bit of uh, basic binary addition, which is pretty trivial, really trivial, because all we have to do is um, follow some basic rules, right? Four of them, um, and we know them by now. Uh, hopefully we've committed them to memory or something. Um, and so we immediately transition to, oh, this is sad. I wish there was a way of just going forward. We will immediately transition to Subtraction now. All right, so just a, a disclaimer on, on subtraction, right? In case people are wondering, you know, why? And for now, um, our discussion of, of how to subtract binary numbers is restricted to what they call um, unsigned integers, right? We're still dealing with integers, but they're unsigned. So we will deliberately try, we're deliberately going to avoid this binary subtraction here. We're deliberately going to avoid uh, situations where the answer is going to be a negative number. We, it turns out that there's, um, there's an in-depth discussion on this when we start looking at uh, uh, three core methods, so sign magnitude, uh, one's complement, and two's complement, to, to see exactly how a computer gets to, to evaluate um, um, negative numbers, right? So what happens when you're, when you're subtracting a number from, or when you're subtracting a negative number from another negative number, for instance, right? All right, uh, right. so it turns out really that when you're dealing with subtraction, there's, there's no, there isn't really like that much of a difference between what we, we tend to do in, when dealing with uh, <laughs> decimal numbers, right? It's, it's typically one and the same thing. Um, Right, and, and you notice that because we're dealing with two, two numbers, a one and a zero, you can only have four combinations, right? When you're subtracting the numbers. So it's either you're, you know, it's either you're going to end up subtracting you know, uh, a zero from a zero, or a zero from a one, a one from a one, or a one from a zero. I don't know if this makes sense. I don't know if this is this falls under the the broad category is it permutations or combinations or something like if you have uh, two things how many different combinations do you have right? this is what I'm talking about so you see that you have a scenario where you have to evaluate zero minus zero one minus zero zero minus one or one minus one nothing else right um, but you realize really that um, these three cases are pretty trivial right why because you know that zero minus zero is zero one minus zero is equal to one right. 1 minus 1 is equal to 1, yeah? The prop, 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, sorry, not 1, right? That's the thing here. Now, it's a, you said 1 minus 1 is equal to 1, right? No, it's not me. I made a mistake, it's my mind. But, but the thing here is the complication arises when you, 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 attempt, when you attempt to subtract um, a 1 from a 0. Because, uh, surprise, surprise, there's no negative 1, right? <laughs> well, yeah. So, but it turns out that there's a, there's a process that is similar to what we normally do in, uh, when subtracting base 10 numbers um, that we can take advantage of, right? Uh, specifically, we, we borrow, right? You have two numbers um, and you're, you're wanting to subtract one from the other, right? Two binary numbers. You're wanting to subtract one from the other. Um, and it so happens that, uh, so, I don't know where my blue pen is, but okay, there's no example for a, a decimal number here. What I'm trying to say is when we are subtracting, when we are taught in primary school, I think grade two or something, to say when you're subtracting one, zero, uh, one. When you're subtracting, let's say, okay, we're gonna say 19, well, 19, wait, 19 from one, zero, one, right, minus. What we were told is 
because is this, because we cannot say one minus nine, right? What we do is we we attempt to borrow from the next digit. Effectively, what we're doing is we are if if you've been following because this is a this is base ten by the way. Um, this is the ones place, tens place, hundreds place, right? But because this is a zero, we cannot borrow from a zero. So what do we do? We move to the next place, which is like a one thousandth place, and then we borrow this one, right? Put it here. Uh, what we have now is what? Yeah, it's this 10. Actually, you, you might think that it's 10, but this is 100. We've borrowed, this is the 100, well, this is the 100, we've borrowed 100, but really, we, we treat it as 10 because it's, this is 100, you know this, right? Um, and so, it, you can think of it as 10, you know, it's fine, but this is 100, it's not 10. <laughs> yes, this is 100, we've gotten, we've gotten what? One, one, we've gotten, <laughs> 1,000 here, 1,000 is the equivalent of what? 10 one hundreds. this is why we say we have 10. But in fact, it's actually 100 we, we have now, right? Not, we, we have 10, 10 one hundreds, right? Okay, so, fine, it's 10, right? So, um, <laughs> it's fine because we understand better because you've, you've been conditioned to think that it's 10. Okay, fine, it's 10. So we get a one from 10, right? Um, but again, we borrow a one from here, and then we say, oh, we have uh, nine, right? But it turns out that what we have is 90, right? The one that we borrow here, we are borrowing from the tens place, so these are tens, right? 10 ones is 10, which is why it's 10, 10 minus one is one, right? Then um, we'll have your eight, and then I think. Oh, sorry, 11, sorry? Two, sorry. Is, no. I'm not a mathematician. Um, <laughs> is this eight? This is eight, right? So is, eight, is, it, is this correct? Yes. Yeah, right. So, so it turns out that we can take advantage of this same process, but, but um, you are going to have to do it just a little bit of um, unthinkable, unlearning and relearning, because when you first start out doing this, if you haven't done this already, I'm not sure if they teach, teach us this thing in, in primary school, junior high school. The borrowing is slightly different when you're dealing with a base, the different bases, like in this case, base two. Because when we are, if this was base two, uh, of course it's good. If we are borrowing, uh, if we want to borrow, when we borrow from here, what we are borrowing is no longer, we're no longer borrowing from the tens place, this is the ones place, this is the twos place, this is the four place, fours place. So we are borrowing from the twos place. Meaning that when we borrow from here, we are borrowing two ones. Now if we find ourselves borrowing from here, this is a one's place, two's place, four's place. If we're borrowing from here to use here, what we're saying is we are borrowing what? Yeah, but it's two twos, right? Four is two twos, right? So it's, you, uh, it will make sense just now. Uh, I don't know where my blue pen is. This thing is, oh, no, is this a pen, a whiteboard marker, sorry. To say he said it was a blue pen, no. Um, right, so we're doing the same thing, right? We, we're going to be borrowing from, um, from adjacent columns on the left. So, observe, a simple example, right? We are subtracting, what are we subtracting here? Hmm? This is eight minus four, right? Yes? Eight minus four, what's the answer? Okay, fine, four. Yeah, so which is what we have before. So the question then is how do we, how are we gonna end up, this is eight minus four, how are we going to end up with four here? That's the question, right? We want to know exactly how we're gonna borrow, right? So um, anyway, this is a different example, but this is sad really. Okay, we can revisit this if you want to. Remind me again, uh, I think I was just trying to explain what I just said to say, for us to, to get to a stage where we, Zero minus zero is zero, zero minus zero is zero, but we can't say zero minus one here. So what we do is we borrow from here, a one, right? Which is two ones. So it will have two ones here. The one and the one will cancel, and then we have a one, which is why we have the one here, right? I'll explain just now. If you want us to walk through this after we are done, let me know. This is a eight, we said, minus uh, four, right? Let me know if, if the other examples we're gonna look at won't make a lot of sense. So. So here's the thing, what if, what if we decided to say, okay, fine, we want to subtract, uh, 
What's this? Three from what? Five, right? The answer should be two, is it? This is three, right? Right? Five minus three. How do we go about doing this, right? We lay down the bits, right? The way we do in, with decimal numbers, left to right, the way they appear, in this case, 101 minus, I've deliberately uh, prefix this 1, 1 with a zero so that we have the same number of bits, so that it's a lot easier for us to work through, right? So you notice that the, the first part is, is okay, it's fine, it makes sense, right? One minus one is zero, this is an easy thing, but, Zero minus one, it turns out, like I don't know if we were told, is it it can't or something? I don't know what they told us. It can't? Well, oh, fine, we can use it can't. So zero minus one, it can't, right? But it turns out that there's an adjacent um, column that we can borrow from, right? So what we do is, we are going to borrow from this adjacent column, right? But you notice that we are, the, the thing that we're evaluating is the, is the two's column. So when we, when we borrow from the adjacent column, it means we are borrowing from the fours column. When we borrow from a fours column, when we borrow one from a fours column, what we are saying is we are borrowing two twos. Two twos is equal to four. Right? We let that sink in. So we've borrowed two twos, which is why I've deliberately, I mean, I'm sure you've probably come across tutorials where people just say, oh, this is a two. We're dealing with binary, so it shouldn't be a two, right? It's just, it's two, two what? Ones, ones right. Okay, uh, so we borrow from there, and then you notice that things do make sense now, because um, one, one uh, minus one is just one, right? This, the, this one and this one will cancel out, so we just remain with one. We just think, gonna say one minus one is zero, and then we have the one remaining, we drop it down, right? Um, and then, Lo and behold, because we, we borrowed from here, we borrowed this one, we've effectively destroyed it, right? So it doesn't exist anymore. So we have a zero here, and then we have a zero. And then we have our answer, which is two, really. It is pretty straightforward here. This is two, right? One's place, two's place. Well, I mean, that other one, that one, the first one that we had This? This? Yes. Uh-huh. Um, the place value there, was it? We are here. Yes. Yeah, so, but you know, so just like decimal numbers, right? As you are moving to the left, you are moving in orders of magnitude what? 10, right? Factor of 10. But with base 2, it's a factor of 2, right? So it really doesn't matter, really. So when these are straightforward, this is going to be 0, 0. But when we come here, because this is it can't, like you say, we destroy this. When we borrow, when, whenever you borrow from the adjacent column, what you're saying is, whenever you're borrowing from an adjacent column to reuse on the next column, you are getting two of whatever you are borrowing. Because it's like, this is twice that, right? So it will still be two when you borrow, actually. So it, so it doesn't matter which place value the one is on, but whenever you borrow, it doesn't make Yes, although there's an example here I'll show you just now. It turns out that there are certain instances where you have to go further left to go and borrow so that you reuse further right, right? Okay. Yeah, like if you had a 1,000 and, this is base 10, 1,007 and you want to subtract 9 from here. You have to borrow from what? From the thousands place, right? And then as you're moving here, like you, you start destroying things and whatnot. But, um, okay, so... And this is what I was saying here, so, but it's not always possible, like this example here, where it's not always possible to borrow from the immediate adjacent column, right? So what you have to do, like in this example, is you go further left, you borrow, um, and then you start, you know, applying here. Um, so we'll look at this example as well. So we are trying to subtract, uh, what are we subtracting? Three from what? This is a one's place, two, two's place, four's place, eight's place, right? Okay. So effectively we're saying eight minus what? Minus three, we should have five, right? Um, so when we start evaluating, because it can't here, and we can't borrow from zero, there's nothing, we can't borrow from zero, we find a one here. Once we borrow it, we destroy this, right? Borrowing this means that we'll have two ones here, right? Um, two ones here. 
but we need to uh, we need to borrow one of the two ones that we've borrowed from here, right? Meaning that we remain with one here. This is why we destroyed it. We borrow it. When we borrow one of the two ones, we end up with two ones uh, in the twos place, right? Um, and then we borrow again um, one of the two ones that we have in the twos place, so that we use it in the ones place. Um, and then finally, in the ones place, we have two ones, right? So two ones minus one one is just gonna be one, right? We can now start evaluating. But as we are moving further left now, you notice that because we destroyed one of the ones here, effectively what, what uh, we've remained with is just one one. So one one minus one one here is just gonna be zero, right? And then when we borrowed here, we remained with one, one minus zero is just one, right? And then finally, because we destroyed uh, we destroyed this 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 one here. Um, we remain with a zero, so this is going to be zero here, which we just ignore, right? And this is how we end up with what is this? Yeah. Five. There's a one here. It can't be four. So one plus plus four. Okay. So so right. This is making sense, hopefully, right? Is this fine? Can we proceed to yeah? Well, I guess it's okay, but it depends on the question, right? Um, so if a, if a question, and the reason why I'm doing this, by the way, is at some stage, we start tracing the, the instructions in ones and zeros, so we want to better understand exactly what's going to be going on. And you can only understand once you, you know exactly how things are being subtracted and added. So if a question, right? If a question comes that says, uh, sub, uh, evaluate, if, if a question is just, oh, evaluate um, one, zero, 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 minus one, one, they're on base two. You can convert them to base 10 if you want to, but if the question says using binary subtraction, you obviously don't get a mark for converting, right? Because it just, it says here, right? Using binary subtraction, but hey, um, I guess. But so if things make sense, I'll leave you with a few exercises. I mean, there'll be more questions in the tutorials, right? Um, Three and eight. Sorry, by the way, if people are wanting the exercise, the things have slightly changed. I've decided to, to include these and uh, more animation so that people will hope you understand the road better instead of just one static slide. So they changed because this thing has grown, right? So the updated slides are, are no longer on Moodle. I'll break these slides up so that we have the size, the minimum requirement for Moodle, but you will find them on the public web interface, right? So when you go to our course web, web page, you will find these notes there. The Moodle ones are probably going to be outdated. Yes, so a question? Which ones are going to be updated? The one on the web, web page, the course web page. Oh, one minute is one. Yes, it's one. Okay, so, yes, my dog. Is it safe to say that every time you borrow, you add two ones to the, to the right one? Yes. Yes, it is safe to do that. So, so here's the thing, right? Have you noticed when we borrow, when we borrow from here, we are borrowing <coughs> ten of these, right? That's what we're doing. But, uh, but it's fine if you you weren't taught how to do that. Uh, I guess because de like decimal is so it's so it's second nature to us. It's Maybe it's hard to unlearn what you were taught. So it just, it's, when you borrow here, it's 10, right? You remove from 10, it's, it's nine. No, it's 90, because what you're, what you're removing here is one of this is gonna be like uh, 10 of this, right? Okay, so just remember though that, um, just remember that, uh, remember that as you're going further left, you know, uh, what you're borrowing increases by a magnitude of two, so it's times two, right? Okay, so, but what about binary multiplication, right? Now that we've done uh, addition. It turns out, again, we can do the same thing. Take advantage of the stuff we were taught when we were multiplying numbers. Right? You remember that? Yeah. I don't know if there's an example for binary here. But you remember what they told us when you're, when you're, when you're multiplying, when you're taught to multiply, um, when you're taught to multiply 13 times 11. 
one trace a series a process where you multiply each digit of one of the numbers with all the digits of the other number right one times three one times one and then when you move here you move a space say one times three one times one right and then you add these up right three four blah blah, blah right so we use the same technique right um, although this time around we're no longer dealing with um, um, the radix 10 or the base 10 but base 2 so observe, let's say we wanted to multiply three times three, right? We know the answer is nine, obviously. Um, we go through the same process, uh, where we're saying we start by one times one, right? Which is one. One times one is gonna be one, and then we move to the next digit, right? One times that one is gonna be one. Remember there's a shift here. One times the other one, we get one, right? And this is where I guess the, the stuff we're doing when we're adding numbers comes in handy. Remember those rules? Right, when, when you're adding, we have four different like possibilities for addition rules, right? So we're gonna use these right now. So after you multiply, we're saying we want to add the result here. So it's, when we add one plus zero, it's gonna be one, right? One plus one, zero, and then we carry the one. And then we'll have two ones, so one plus one is gonna be another zero, we carry the one, and then we just drop down the one, right? Um, and then we end up with, uh, eight plus one, which is nine, right? And you notice what makes, I guess, binary multiplication or what makes working with binary numbers a lot easier is, is the fact that you, you're you just dealing with two numbers, one and zero, right? And the, the, the resulting output is not going to be, it's not going to involve a lot of work for you to evaluate, right? I don't know if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, so here's another example, I guess. Uh, it's, it's somewhat a uh, different example. This time around, we're saying we want to multiply what? Five times what? Yeah, five times 10, we know the answer is 50, right? So are we going to be able to get 50? Yeah, this is 10, right? Uh, two plus eight. So, so we go through the same process. The reason I included this is because we have slightly more placeholders here, right? So it's gonna be slightly involving because you'll be adding like three rows, right? Although, I mean, it's, there's nothing to it really. So one times zero is gonna be zero, and then one times one is gonna give us a one, one times zero is a zero, one times one is a one. And then we move on to the next number, right? Which is a zero. Uh, and I guess the zero, we expect to have zeros throughout because zero times any number is, do you want to move slightly I don't think it was seen. Um, it's gonna be zero throughout, right? And then we move to the last digit, which is a one. One times zero is one, one times one is one, one times zero is zero, and then one times one is one. And then what we do now is we add these three rows, right? So zero, here we just drop, one plus zero is just one, zero plus zero plus zero is just zero, one plus zero plus one is just zero remainder one, right, or carry one. Um, and then we just have one plus zero plus zero, which is one, right? then one plus nothing is just one, and then we have our answer, right? This makes sense. And you notice that this is a 50, right? This is a one's place, two's place, so that's two. Um, four's place, eight's place, 16's place, 64's place, right? Is that so? Yeah, then when you add this, it should give you, no, not 64, this is 32, sorry. So when you add uh, 32 plus 16 plus, plus two, you should get 50. Is this making sense? I mean, this is trivial stuff, really. I mean, so it really doesn't matter if someone tells you to say, multiply this number by that. I mean, you should be able to do this, right? This is easy, actually. And it turns out, really, that I guess depending on the types of numbers you're working with, it might be a lot easier for you to multiply numbers using base 2 rather than base 10. I don't know if this is making sense. If we had to convert this to base 10, for instance, this to base 10, you realize that it would be more involving than just multiplying this by, it would be, one, 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 plus one, 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 and then you just add them, which is, I guess. Okay, um, but the question now is then, this is the last bit, I guess. How do we divide them, right? Now then we know how to multiply, how to subtract and add. Finally, how do we go about dividing? Again, it turns out, I mean, I'm not sure if there are other kind of like methods you can use, um, but a method that I've found useful in the past is, remember, long division, right. Uh, I found long division quite useful. I'm moving up and down a lot. I'm forgetting the click. Long division to be quite useful. I don't think I have to write this down here. Observe, if, if we were taught to divide, excuse me, come on. 
So 34 divided by 2 in base, t in base 10. And I deliberately included this uh, example in base 10 because I know division can be slightly confusing in comparison to multiplication. Multiplication is straightforward and subtraction and addition, but div division, some people find it a bit, I guess, uh, <coughs> confusing. So I thought we'd start with revising long division, right? Grade one work. So, yes, it's grade one. Yes, long division is grade one. Yes. So it turns out with long division, we remember this, right? Saying you first of all start by dividing two by the first digit here, right? If you can go in, then you get the answer. You multiply, you know, one by two, you get the two, and then you subtract, you know, what you got here. You have the one, and then you check, can one go into two? It can't, and then you drop down the four, um, and then you check if two can go into 14 which it does is seven, you multiply the seven by the two, you get your 14, and then you subtract the 14 and the 14, you get a zero. The moment you get a zero as your solution, once you subtract um, the, the two different numbers, then you stop, right? You know that you've, you've converged to your solution, right? Again, the examples in here, uh, and what we're dealing with is not really looking at remainders. I mean, we could use a, a thing with a remainder. So these are, Numbers that can perfectly go into each other, right? Like two into 34, for instance. We're gonna do the same thing for binary numbers. So that we don't get confused, right? Um, sorry? No, what do you mean, from here? No, we done, the answer is 17 here. Two, two divided, 34 divided by two is 17. Now this is just an example of long division in this term. So, but the question then is, what if we wanted to divide, uh, what? This term, long division. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not going to do again long division in chat. You're joking, right? We shouldn't. You want me to do. Are you seriously telling me you want me to go through this? This is great. Well, sorry, I mean, if you are maybe you've forgotten, I, I take that back. But I don't think there's need to go to divide. Uh, yeah, and they're laughing because it's trivial stuff, right? If, if what you want to do, right? For you to understand, div, div, to, for you to understand the division of binary numbers, I suggest the moment we leave this place, what you want to do is work through maybe at least five long division problems in base ten in decimal to remind yourself. So maybe you say, "Oh, what's the what's the answer if I divide?" Uh, uh, maybe what what what's the perfect sixty-four? What's the answer if I? Can four, uh, three. Okay, what's the answer when I do that? And then work through it step by step, right? One divided by three is zero, right? I'm serious here. I'm, well, if you don't, if you understand, it's fine. But if you don't, you better, you better work through, no, it's, if you better work through the long division problems, in base 10 so that you understand the process because it's the same process we are using with binary numbers. That's the point I'm trying to put across. Here. Right, so what we're saying here is we're saying, what happens if we divide what? This is two plus, what's this? Two plus eight is 10, right? So what happens if we divide 10 by five, right? One's place, two's place, four's place, four plus one is five, this is 10, right? Eight's place, four's place, eight's place, two's place. So 10 divided by five, we should get two. How do we get two? We're saying long division, right? Yeah. One, zero, one, zero divided by one, zero, one. We first of all start by checking. Can one, zero, one, what is one, one divided by one, zero, one? You notice that uh, one, one, zero, one is greater than one, right? Yes. In binary, right? Why? Because this is one in base 10, and then this is what? five in base 10. So it's like the it can't kind of thing here, right? Because it can't, we are going to just, we will write a zero because we're getting started, we're writing a zero deliberately, right? And then we check, is one, zero, one, base two, uh, greater or less than one, one, base two? We know that this is, one, zero. thank you, one, zero. We know that this is two, right? So the question is, is two best, what, what happens if two best 10 and five best 10? We know that this is still greater, right? So what we do is we just write a zero as well. 
But lo and behold, we come across a situation where we have 101 divided by 101, which is the same number. The answer is one. And then we, we go with the, the same sequence of events where we multiply one by 101, and then we get 101, we subtract, right? Once we subtract, you notice that we, we get a zero, right? And then what do we do? We're gonna drop down the zero that's remaining there, and then we'd say, one, what zero divided by 101 is a zero. And then we converge because we are done, right? And you notice that 10 divided by five is what? Two, one zero, or zero zero one zero is two, right? One's place, two's place. Is that fine? For this? Okay. Okay, fine. So we, we start by, this only makes sense if you understand the long division in this 10, by the way. We start by checking if, if we can divide one by 101 here. We cannot, so we're just gonna write a zero. Can we divide one zero with one zero one? We cannot because it's less, right? We write a zero. Can we divide one zero one by one zero one? Yes, we can, it goes in one time. One times that, the answer is one zero one. And then we're gonna subtract one zero one up here with one zero one from one zero one, which we get two. And then we drop down the zero that's remaining there. Um, and then we've converged because, it's, I mean, we're going to divide zero by that, this is zero, and then we converge because zero minus times this is going to be zero, zero minus zero is zero. So we've converged. The subtraction here, we don't do it the way we do it, the way that we just done it. Where? We just do direct. Like, well, we so, imagine that it's one minus one. No, no, it's, we're doing it the same way. But the only thing here, and this is what makes um, binary multiplication a lot, uh, binary division a lot easier. Why? Because when you are multiplying, um, the, the quotient with the, is that the dividend or the, the, the divisor, it's either you're multiplying it by one or zero. And when you're multiplying it by one, then it's going to be that same number. If you're multiplying it by zero, it's just going to be zero. That's what makes this a lot easier, actually. Do you understand this? What I'm saying is, for, for instance, the sequence of events where we, we were saying um, one times one zero one. One times one zero one is just going to be? What is one times one zero one? It's one zero one. Right, when we get to a point where we're trying to multiply zero times one zero one, zero times one zero one is just going to be zero. So it's going to be zero or that number. The, the, really the hard work is just um, the subtraction part. But now that we know how to subtract, it shouldn't be that hard. Now observe, right, what if we, we decided to work with a slightly different number here, right? Are we, are we there yet? Is it? It's wrong here. It was supposed to be, it was supposed to be one, one, zero, one, zero, 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 divided by one, zero, zero, right? One's place, two's place, four's place, so this is four. Um, one, two, four, eight, 16, 64, 32. So add 32 plus, uh, plus, is this 64? Add 64 plus 32 plus 8. What's the answer? 64 plus 32 plus, plus 8. Yeah, thank you, 104. So what we're saying is, in this particular example, um, by the way, I'm, I'm expressing them in decimal because I want you to understand what we're working towards. I know it's a lot easier for you to understand what we're working towards if we, first of all, briefly, or momentarily convert them to decimal so that we know the numbers we're working with. So in this case, we are saying, we're going to divide what? 104 by four. So we know that the answer we get in binary must be the equivalent of what? Okay, fine. At least we are not struggling with this. So we are working towards 26 here, right? So ignore this, this is supposed to be 110100. I'll change this divided by 100. So we start with the same process, right? We check, is, is, can, we, can we divide one perfectly by one zero zero? We cannot because one is less. So you write a zero. We shift to the next bit. One one divided by one zero zero. Again, this is much smaller than this. So we shift to the next bit, right? We know that this is greater than this. So this can go into there one time, right? 100 into 110 is one. One times 100, so it's 100, it's 111. We get 100, and then we subtract the two. 
right? Same sub subtraction rules we just spoke about here. Zero minus zero is zero. One minus zero is one. One minus one is zero, right? And then we, we try now, we try to say, can we, can, can this go into one zero? It cannot, right? So what do we do? We drop down this one here. It comes down here. We check, can this go into one zero one? It can, right? It goes there one time. We multiply the one by one zero zero, right? We get one zero zero. We subtract one zero zero from one zero one. We're gonna get one, right? Can, now this is where it gets really interesting. Can we divide one by, by no. one zero zero? We cannot, so we drop, or we subtract that. So what we do is we drop this zero here, right? Can we divide one zero by one zero zero? No. It's, it's zero, it goes in zero times. It turns out that when you're dropping, this is why I'm saying you go through the division thing in base 10. When you're, we, there's certain rules you follow when you're dropping numbers, right? In this case, you notice that when, when we subtract it the first time, when we check if this can go into one, if it cannot, we're not saying the answer is zero, but we immediately drop. The moment the, the, moment the, the result of subtracting the two numbers is, is not large enough to be, uh, to, to be divided by the divisor, what you do is you drop down the zero, right? You don't do anything, there's no answer, you just drop down the zero, right? Once you drop it down, when you check, if this is still smaller, it's like you're now dividing what you've dropped down, right? Which is one zero. The answer is actually zero. It has to be zero, right? And then zero times this is gonna be zero and whatnot, well, so we don't have to do this, we ignore it. We drop down the other zero now. And we're saying one zero zero by one zero zero, it's, it's just going to be one, right? The one times one zero zero is just going to be zero. Um, we drop down the zero. We, we subtract this to its zero. Again, notice that at this stage, we're not dividing because this is the result of subtracting these two numbers, right? So we're gonna just drop down this zero, remaining zero. And then we check. Zero divided by this is zero, right? Zero times zero is zero, and then we converge because it's gonna be zero, and then we get the answer, right? Hopefully this kind of makes sense. I mean. I thought the two examples would, would be kind of uh, pretty straightforward. Um, is this fine? Sorry? What's long? No, no, but it's, it's long because I'm, I'm going through, we're going through it step, step by step. This is something you can do in a minute, actually. This is, probably, this is something you can do in less than a minute, by the way. D dividing this number in less than a minute. This is, there's nothing to it. Really. Sorry? Are there any questions that was... Oh, crap. Is this making, any, making sense? Um, I guess before we get to the overflow thing, we'll continue off with the overflow on Friday, I guess. I mean, I was going to talk about the overflow thing and whatnot. Maybe we'll, we'll take a breather and then we'll, we'll continue, we'll continue on, on Friday. Right, um, and we are, we are really, on Friday, um, it's my hope that once we discuss overflow thing and, and we start looking at um, signed integers, I think we should, be, we should be done by Friday. If not, we are certainly going to finish off number, number systems by, by the weekend, right? Um, so if there are no questions, I'll leave you with, yes. Yeah, because it can't be a take home. Why should it be a take home quiz? If Monday is a holiday, then we shall, we shall have a take home quiz for that. A separate take home quiz. <laughs> I didn't know Monday was a holiday. Thank you very much. Yes. There's a suggestion. Friday was supposed to be our third test. We are supposed to have two test Third quiz, quiz, yeah. It was supposed to be our third test. Yeah. We're seeing Monday being a holiday. Can the other two quizzes be up that I am I'm so, thank you, thank you, Ms. Mulenga. I'm so happy that uh, people have gotten to a stage where they've taken ownership of this thing, right? Uh, and it's a sign for us that, no, this is serious. I, I think this is a sign that uh, things are making sense and you're, you're eager to learn, right? Which is a good thing. You are actually asking for assessment. Thank you very much. Yes, we shall do that. Because Monday is a holiday. I didn't know Monday was a holiday. I should check my calendar. We shall have take home quizzes. We do have a quiz on Friday. We shall have two take-home quizzes yes. that we were supposed to have when I was away uh, for us to work through during the long weekend. They will be ready on Friday evening. 
Yes, two of them. They shall be due by Tuesday. Hey, thanks a lot. See you. Thank you very much. Hey, Professor, how are you? Uh, I'm very sick, so, sir. You're sick? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry to hear that. Did you go to the clinic? Yes. What did they say? Did they give you medication? They gave me medication. Okay. Yes. So which office did you say I was supposed to go to? Because my mind is learned, actually. Oh, you should go and see the... What you want to do, right, is... Uh, so if there's someone else... Okay, just... A, a good way to start is... Take stock of who has, who is doing that course. I know that the languages minors have different courses, French and Chinese. So take stock of who in class, um, who in class is doing that particular course, learn 1200. Count them, right? And then go and see the assistant registrar, fourth floor, you know the office, right? Istanbula. Fourth floor, tell him to say your class ref, um, four, four and four. 4 and 4, 4 and 5, I think, I don't know. But you see that it's written assistant registrar. Um, and, then, and then what you do is you tell him to say, we've looked at draft, exam draft number number one, and there's a clash between ICT 1100 and LAN 1200, and the, uh, Lighton said we should come and see you so that we try and sort this out, we see how we can sort this out. So that by the time, because there are a couple of drafts coming up, you want to make sure that by the time we get to draft number two, draft number three, this is fixed. I assure you, you don't want to be quarantined, right? It's, you, you want to have time to study for the other stuff. Thanks. All right. Hi. Yeah, I didn't understand why you said you should find the whole post lines. Oh, you should, you find them. Uh, do, do you have access to the internet right now? Yes. We are, Miss JD, we are going to, you know, we are behind, you know, I've been away for a while and I'm behind with a lot of things. I'm hoping I can, I guess, work on those things by the weekend. So I assure you by Monday, those things will be ready. The thing is, um, the tutor only, the tutors don't help in marking, maybe we should change that or something. I have to do with marking myself. But by Monday you have the two quizzes that are pending ready. Is that fine? Sorry for the inconvenience. I know you're excited about this. Yeah. You want to... Is it, I got the website. So you go to list dot... You've never used this before. Who is that? Dot... ZM forward slash uh, tilde symbol the tilde the tilde symbol the tilde I don't know if your key, keyboard setting you probably want to type somewhere here is that tilde somewhere yeah what do you call it I have no idea. Okay. Uh, light on theory, L-I-G-H-T-O-N, T-O-N, P-H-I-R-I, slash, or slash, yeah, I see the two, oh, no, just go, just enter, enter. Scroll down and go to. How, how do you not have this bookmarked? Go to. Uh, let's scroll down. Uh, 2019. Then scroll to the part where we have. Um, hmm. Where is number system here? Scroll down. It's down. It's way down. Do you not access this? Okay, fine. It doesn't matter. Go to. Where do we have number system? Just click one of these. The one up, maybe one up. This one? One of these, yeah. Just the one, no, the one saying one up. Go back, one up. The four up, it's fine. The four up, but the four up is going to be. Just say download, just say download. It's going to be, it's hard to overwrite. Is that fine? Just check and see if we have the stuff we're talking about. 
think this one. Yeah, so. But you, the one up is, is, I don't know which one you prefer. Normally, the four up you want to use if you want to print this. No, for printing, because the number of, the number of pages is fewer. So, I don't know. Thank you, sir. What are you doing? <laughs> you don't have to, I'm not saying you stop, but you don't have access to the to the slide. <laughs> this one? Sorry? Yeah, but they, they are there online, right? <laughs> no, but you can still do this on your. You don't have a. Yeah, or, you, or you wanted to see it from here. It's different. Huh? Is this making sense? Yeah. yeah, you can do that if you want to, but, but the question sometimes will be explicit, right? It'll tell you to say, uh, use, use binary, <laughs> use binary division or something. So when you convert, you just waste your time because you don't get any marks, right? Right? She knows, she's done this before. You probably want to go and ask her for questions if you want. She's an expert in class. And, and he's our expert as well. You said the quiz would be based on what? Now on obstruction, there are no notes. 